Okay, so in today's video I'm going to show you how to make these cute hand-painted polymer clay pendants for your necklaces. Um, so you can see two I've made earlier. One's a cute little cat one which has a little tail on the reverse and then the other one's just a Norwegian themed one which as you know I like all things Norwegian so um, I'll show you now how I made these. Um, okay, so let's get into the video. Um, so for this you'll need some Sculpey clay. Um, I can't remember how much this was but it, was a, it wasn't it was much, it was around about £10 or less and it it weighs quite a lot, I mean it's three quarters of a kilo. Um, it's quite a soft clay when it's made um, and it can be quite difficult to work with because it's so soft but um, I'll show you how to get the best out of it. So you'll need the Sculpey you'll need a mould so for this one I'm using um, one which just makes different pendant shaped uh, sorry different pendants um, so that's that you'll need a mat or something to work on um, some kind of scraping tool just to clean the mould up when you're done um, I should have cleaned this one up a bit as you know working with clean tools just give better results um, you'll need some paintbrushes, so these are just different different ends. I've got a small fine end and a thicker end for painting uh, the pendants. Um, you'll need a tray. Sorry, I've got another. I've got another project stuck to this at the minute. Um, but you'll need a tray with a clean one preferably obviously this one isn't because I've just been painting something but on this one I'm just showing you the technique and um, so it'll do for now you'll need some acrylic paints um, you can use watercolors but the results won't be quite as good it's not as vivid it's difficult to layer up the paint and get a really good vivid result um, so get acrylic if you can you'll need some clear nail varnish or other clear varnish so beware of wood varnishes because they're often um, like a brownish tint so just check it on something before you use it um, you'll need a non-spill paint pot or some other paint pot like a glass if you're feeling brave um, with these ones I've just got some extra paints you'll need a pencil an eraser and some kind of waterproof pen so for my artwork i like to use these um let me just see if i can get it to focus i like to use these uniball pens um they're just an alcohol based marker um and they're dead easy to work with so you'll need them um and i think that's about it so here the the main thing you have to get right is the clay so you obviously you want it to fill the mold and you don't want any air bubbles or anything in it um, so I'll show you how to do that now without um, making it really difficult for yourself so let me just put that to one side so I'll break off a bit of clay um, you'll see with this it starts off quite crumbly um, but as you work it it does become really really soft um, so you don't need to work it much just 30 seconds or so and it's soft enough and then what you need to do is start putting it in your mold so i'm going to show you how to do this and then i'll work on a piece which i've already um baked in the oven so let's say for this one we'll go with this small circle mold so all i, all I do with this is just move the hole to one side pack in the um, the clay and then just check on the other side that it covers the mould and you're not left with any air bubbles which it does um, and then all I do is I just keep adding bits of clay and then packing them right in there um, and then each time you put one in just check that you've got no air bubbles on the back um, I think we should be right just to fill this now so like I said just put some more clay in there check on the back that you've not got any air bubbles um, let me just see if it will focus 
there we go so that looks okay on that side so now i know i've got no air bubbles all i need to do is just make sure that the back is flat and easy to work with so with that i just tend to put in excess uh, material and as you know it's quite soft because we've already been working it so i then take a scraping tool and sometimes it takes a few passes to get this right but we'll give it a go so just scrape off the extra you can always re-add material if you need to um, and like i said it can take a few passes to to get it right So we're just removing bits of the material as we go along. You don't have to get it perfect, it just needs to be approximate. So there you go, so that is the material now in the mould. Um, so the secret to this is getting the clay out of the mould right you need to make sure that this is as hard as you can when you take it out of the mould so as you know it's really it's really soft to start with um, one of the tricks that I've learned is put this mould in the freezer for about five minutes okay and then when you come back to it you'll be able to easily just take this out of the mould and you'll be left with something like this okay um, and then once it's out of the mould, pop it in the oven. I usually put it on about 160 Celsius, that is, um, and leave it. I keep checking it and bending it and see if it bends. When it stops bending, that's when it's okay to come out of the oven. Um, these ones, I think, took about 30 minutes. Um, and as you can see, they're not, they're not really thick. But a reasonably thick shape will be more rigid. Um, it'll be more durable and if you're going to be selling these things you definitely can't be making them too thin because they'll just break and clients won't be happy um, when you are taking them out of the mold they'll be really careful when you're taking it off this part up here because this is where you've got the hole and it's also quite close to the edge so you'll find if it's going to crack when you're taking it out of the mold this is where it'll do it so just be really careful, tease off the rest of the um, the rest of the mould and then come to this bit and be really really careful and just kind of bend it back and push it out and that should get you the piece out without cracking. If it does crack you need to wait really for it to be soft again before you can remould it and put it back in the freezer. Okay so basically go back to the um the molding stage again okay so th this one's come out of the oven i've actually painted this just with some white acrylic paint to give it a background as you can see there's not actually that much difference in terms of color because the clay is white anyway i prefer to do it though just to give me a smoother surface okay so i'm going to show you now how to paint on there okay so I get this is just for demo um so say for example we're going to paint say flower okay so I'm just choosing some acrylic paint I'm just showing you the technique here bear in mind okay so let's go with okay so obviously you have to decide on what you're going to paint i've not really um had much thought to be honest but let's just say we'll go with a simple flower okay so i'm just building this one up petal by petal you don't need to have it too neat because you're going to go over it anyway with the pen it's probably more important that you smooth the paint rather than bother too much about the edges being perfect it's just if you if you paint smooth at the edges where you're going to be drawing you'll get a much nicer line when you're finished okay 
Okay, we're nearly done. Right, so that's just a really simple flower shape. Um, and then... Sorry, I'm not sure. Oh, do you know, Alexa's wonderful, isn't she? I don't know what on earth she's not sure about. So, you're going to have to leave that now about five ten minutes before you can paint the next layer okay so i'm just going to assume we've waited long enough um this result probably isn't going to be too brilliant because i've not waited long enough um it's probably more important that you wait long enough for the next stage which is where you're going to draw in it so we'll take some of that yellow paint And I'm just going to paint the centre of the flower. This does usually layer up much, much better if you do it when it's dry. So, I'm nearly done there. So just build it up layer by layer. Like I said, try and get the edges of it fairly flat and then it's a lot easier to draw on. Okay, so we're going to leave that now for about 10-15 minutes to dry. The longer you leave it, the better your results will be because when you do draw the black lines around each of the oh, each of the areas, you'll get a thicker line if you've still got some moisture in the paint. Okay, so your result won't look quite as good if you um, don't leave it long enough. Plus your risk just trashing it basically okay so we're going to leave that now for about 10 minutes and then i'll come back to it okay see you in a bit okay so we're just about ready for the next step now ideally i would leave this a little bit longer to dry but this is just to show you the technique okay so the next step is you get your pen um and like i said i'm using a black alcohol based marker and all you need to do then is just draw around the shapes so that you get whatever pattern you're looking for. So with this I'm just roughly showing you the technique. Okay, so once you've gone over the edges, just leave it to dry for a few, um, a few minutes ideally. Um, and then we'll come back to this and we'll, we'll glaze it okay so just imagine that this is dry enough to glaze it isn't really but we're we're doing it anyway um and you're just going to use some clear nail varnish to glaze the top of it um and all you do is just get quite a lot on your brush because you don't really want to have to brush this too much um and then just paint the surface um We've just got a little bit of transfer there because I've not left it long enough. Um, but then just paint paint over the top. And I mean this one doesn't look brilliant because I've not left it long enough. But if you do leave it long enough, you leave it about 10-15 minutes one from drawing the lines until you glaze it. Um, and then you'll be left with something that's quite pretty really like this one. Um, so give it a go. Let me know what you think. Um, I would make a better tutorial if I had a better setup, but unfortunately I haven't at the minute. Um, it is something I'm working on, but we'll get there in time. Okay, so I hope that helps show you the technique. Um, like I said, give it a go. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and if you've got any other tips or tricks, do let me know and I'll make sure I pass them on. Alright, thank you. Bye for now.